Hello, this is Grant, and welcome back to the final episode of Dead Rising 1 Master Run. It's going to be a pretty long episode. I wanted to lump all this big stuff together because I've been saving it. It's my last commentary on this game, at least for a while, and I just have some stuff I'd love to talk about. I've had a great time doing this. So let's get started. It must be connected to something. Isabella, look. So, I think this is kind of a, I guess like a MacGuffin. What's it called? Deus Machina or something, where it's really convenient that the helicopter crashes into this one tunnel, which I guess the clock tower is just sitting on the sewers or something. It seems odd. I mean, I guess it leads out of town, but the military is elsewhere in the town. I guess they're, he's afraid that they won't be able to make it out of the mall and they need this to sneak out. And they're hoping it probably comes out at some tunnel somewhere and they can just walk out of the city. Still. It's odd. It's a really cool section. This last like 30 minutes, they change up so much else about the game. Like this perfume, pretty cool idea. Be cool if they uh, had something like it you could craft in the game, like if you unlocked it by doing the end, Let's go. end here. Yeah. It would definitely be useful for survivors. The only thing you can really do is you can get the opposite, which is Zombate, and then that, never really tried it, but in theory, if you attract all the zombies yourself, it might help the survivors get through. Don't really know. But here we go. We have to essentially escort Isabella. It's a pretty easy section. After this, you only have what you brought with you. They don't really make it a big point to like go collect good weapons or anything, but you're going to want some. There are these rocks around, and hopefully by now you should have some good martial arts moves, because you're going to need those. Here I'm just kind of messing around and looking around. I haven't, I've only been to this area in the game like three times, I think. Like, it was the first time I beat it, and then I think I came back here once, kind of, just to test these things out. But really, it's like it's so much work to get all the way back here. Although in theory, I think I could just go start just overtime mode now, but I didn't have it unlocked on this save, so I had to go do that again. Plus, there's not much to do. But it's weird. Like, I'm this whole time, if you see me kind of wander off, it's because part of me wants to go and, like, explore. And I was wondering, hey, maybe I should just go and do it, not save, and then see if there's anything cool I can do when I'm messing around. Isabel is also invincible, as I found out, which is really convenient. And I'm pretty sure she can't defect either, so you can just go crazy. I think the only weapons in here are rocks or probably some of those meat, human meat, hand meat, whatever they're called. Rock's actually a really good weapon. <laughs> It's so much fun going through here like this because they just fall over. I don't think this is how it would actually work because she said it suppresses their attack instinct. And then she's like, oh, it just smells bad. I think what actually would happen is they would just not be aggressive around you. But the fact that they just like literally fall over is a bit much. I'm kind of having fun here. They also litter it with save points because I could see you, if you come in here with like one bar of health, well, there's no food. So you just kind of have to make it the little the little segment of the way eventually and then hopefully continue. I don't know. There's not much down here. Really, it's just you're walking through here for story reasons. It usually could have just been like, oh, it worked, or just give a cutscene. Technically, you don't do anything, but still, it's kind of a cool area. I think it's really just a way to get the player have some fun where you're just like plowing through these zombies. It's a fun time. They give you these sections here where Isabel has to go around to open up the gate. At this point, if you're this far, it's not really an issue. Out of debate, that was like what level I should be for this. I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get level 50 all the way through the run because I decided early that for time issues, I wanted to just kind of test it as I went rather than trying to do a whole master run, completing it, making sure everything works, and then going. And it turned out really well, actually. Because, like I said, the game's not that hard to do it this way. Especially since, like, I'm getting every survivor anyway. I'm usually pretty... have a pretty good level in resources available to me. Man, it's been a long journey. Anyway, like, I thought... I could have easily sat and farmed the special forces guys. Like, it's really easy to do if you go to the supermarket. You can just exit, come back in, and they'll all respawn in this tiny little area. And they'll give you like 5,000 PP and die really fast with the chainsaw, so it's really simple to level up really fast at the end here. So I figured it was kind of a moot point, because we do hit 50 just by ending the game. Are 
Are you sure this was a good idea? Guards here too. I think it's really interesting is that you can tell how much you can look at it two ways. The quality of this area is that either they put so much work into the mall because they knew obviously you're saying your entire game in this limited area rather than going through individual levels. Or that maybe this was just like at the very end they added on. Because it's a really simple repetitive texture and this like quarry is really <laughs> it doesn't seem like they put a lot of work into it. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Because like I said, I'd much rather have them do a lot of work on the mall because after all you spend so much time there in that one like, confined little area. So, I'm not too over here. And then here they have it so that Isabella's perfume wore off. I don't know why they bothered with that, because it's such a close... Like, you're basically there, and if you carry her, you don't need to fight him anyway. It's not like you're fighting them before, so it's not... It doesn't really change anything. Maybe there was some other reason where, like, they didn't want to worry about Isabella's pathing here. So they just said, oh, well, you have to carry her, because then they don't have to do anything about it. But it seems like they just needed to move to get you here. Like, there's not really much store going on in this little portion until we get to the tank which is a boss fight that is completely unlike anything else in the game it's another thing is it just like it's almost like they decided this either way early on and it didn't get changed or they added it way later but a lot of me see like even watching it now I'm like what would happen I wonder if I go down that pathway without the Jeep I don't know I've never tried it but at this point I'm like I should finish it up I think here you actually play as Isabella, technically, in this upcoming boss fight. In a way, it probably would ca I'm surprised this didn't catch me more off guard in terms of, like, mechanics. There's nothing else in the game where you have, like, this on-the-rail shooter you have to, like, fight this with. It's completely different. I think if you play the Wii version, they do have stuff like this to face the convicts and whatnot, but this is technically, it's, there's nothing like this else in this game. I also, I don't actually know what this place is. I kind of go back and forth if you hear me talk in other videos or in this. It's either a quarry or it's a military base. I don't know. Maybe it's a dam looking up there. I don't know. I don't think they ever mentioned it. I say it's a quarry just because it looked like everything cut out, but being able to like sit and look back there, it's probably more likely a military base. Particularly the reason I think about that is it is stated that there's one near the mall because that's where the convicts get there. Humvee, and that's assuming you get one here. Don't know why there was one just sitting there, or why the military base has a direct line to the sewers, unless maybe that is just an emergency tunnel to the mall, which seems really convenient. But yeah, I can't imagine they, why they have a tank to fight zombies. Can't imagine it's that good. But I guess he's kind of glad he brought it for this. I'm sure it's something like, well, they just had it at their disposal, so why not? They probably had a blank check when it came to getting stuff for this operation. They're like, let's just bring all of it. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit anything that lights up on the tank to damage it. You can hit those lights in the front. I guess their sensors kind of follow you. And then every once in a while there's a little aimer that comes up you can hit as well. Got those drones, which I think just fly at you and explode. They're really easy. I always thought those drones were kind of cute in a dumb way because they're like these tiny little blimps. They're all, you'll recognize them from overtime mode. They're really obvious elsewhere where they just like report you and they have little tiny machine guns. Basically, if you can shoot that sensor on top fast enough, the tank won't be able to hit you. Which, since it's dead rising, guns do very little damage. So it does, it does like one block health. Which, I mean, at this point, you're probably meant to be able to kill this thing because. It's not like you can go back and level up more or go get health or even use health during this fight. So I think it's something where they wanted to maybe be tense, but really it's not that hard to get through. Because it's supposed to be a big, kind of climatic ending. Although really just kind of there. Overtime mode is just, like, I don't know. Technically it's like part of the story. It's, I would describe it better as the main game is, is the story of Dead Rising. Overtime mode is just kind of the story of how Frank West got out, I suppose. In many ways, it seems kind of thrown together, like, Brock has a boss. It's kind of weird. Like, he's, he just shows up at, in overtime mode. You never meet him, and it isn't until at the very end when he just talks about, I guess, why he's there. And I don't know, me as a person, I get what they're, like, trying to do to 
make him seem evil for like one kill. But like really, it's just his job. I get it. I mean, you should go blame like whoever's sending him, not the dude who's just doing his job. Although you could argue he's probably not very humane and very just loves throwing a lot of violence at his issue here. Because really, I think this tank's a little bit of overkill. That being said, I don't know what they were planning on doing. Like in Dead Rising 2, which I just started up and will be coming out tomorrow if you're watching this on the release day. There, their, their go-to is just to wait three days and then immediately burn the entire city. So since they have, I don't know how they handled a Santa Cabeza, they might have a similar process here where just basically go through and demolish the city. So in which case, if you're going to blow up the city anyway or like burn it to the ground, it's really hard to have any more overkill than that in the meantime. Automated machines are no use at all on the battlefield. Switch to manual control. <laughs> so I guess if it was all automated, was he just like sitting in there with like his, his arms crossed watching the boss fight go? Don't know. It's also a pretty fast tank if it can push that thing over. But then again, if they had to like slowly, slowly show the tank pushing it over, it'd be less climatic than a big bash. But I mean, if it goes just as fast as that G, but full speed, that's something. Oh shit! Well, what have we here? His voice actor is really familiar to me. I can't remember what it was from. Where were you hiding when my men mopped up the mall? So I think he recognizes Frank at this point as someone who was like taking out his men and stuff. Otherwise, how would he know he's in the mall? You have imagination. That's what drives you in your quest to run. I think this is almost like a moment where they try to get political, but I feel like it just kind of gets thrown in there where this one cutscene is the only thing where they even talk about this idea. Really. They, they tackle a little you know bit more in two, I think. So maybe they were trying to set up that, or maybe the they'd always wanted to do this, and this is the only place they could find room to narratively tell it. Because there's not a lot of narrative, big narrative cutscenes in Dead Rising. I talked over early on, it's so like, you have like the intro cutscene where they talk about it. Then you have the Dr. Barnaby cutscene where he lies about, oh, it's drug trade operation. And then Isabel comes, like, oh wait, now it's actually, here's the... Where they talk about what actually happens. Humanity has proven itself to be quite adept at making this. This is a big line. It's pretty interesting. But I just wish they did more of this character. Like I'm amazed they didn't do. At least have them show up somewhere in the mall. I'd say this mission isn't quite over yet. Don't you agree? <laughs> Even now, I'm still wondering if it was worth it to wear the mask. Because then, <laughs> it kind of takes away from those facial expressions. The zombies move quickly. Guess that's from Frank opening up that gate. They don't have any explanation here why you're going to lose all your items for this boss fight, but it's kind of a cool idea how it's, it's 1v1 match. Assuming that you've covered wars, and assuming that he's been in wars, so it's pretty much equal. But this fight can go so differently depending on what level you are. I don't know, like, it'd be kind of interesting to see, like, what's the lowest possible level you could get to to fight him. But... As long as you have at least the jump kick, which you get really early on, you should be okay, because that's going to be your bread and butter. Really, you don't want to do the somersault kick, which is just a standing jump and then hit X really quickly. You can't... I cannot reliably pull it off. But the double area also works. Basically, it tries to throw you off the tank. He can get thrown off, but he gets up so quickly. It's hard. You can actually get a picture of him taunting. I think I might have done it there, or that might have just been... Whatever. The main issue is he blocks... And it's, it can be very inconsistent to get certain moves up. 
<laughs> you can see Isabel over there just kind of lost. It's hilarious. So part of me, I think I get knocked down here. Part of me is, again wants to be like, what if like, what if there is like say a rock somewhere you can find to use against him? Man, I'm being so cheesy there with that jump kick. But what if yeah, there, well, there's like one rock or maybe I think I see a a hand like one of those like meat items somewhere. Like what if you could take them in the fight and maybe that's the trick to beating him in life? Oh, I just want to go around and see. I've never done that before because I never come here. And like when I was going through like my test run, it was so much fun to mess around with all these crazy things. That being said, you can you can really feel like some of the physics in this game, like the stumbling and whatnot, and how annoying it is with him knocking you off. I wish they had worked up the martial arts a little bit better. Dead Rising 2, they do it pretty well with the triggers, and I think that's just because since you don't have a camera, you can use the triggers for a little bit more. Basically, that frees it up for some good moves. Oh yeah, there I missed the photo op. That was it. But like when you have to do, basically everything is like press X or press A at the right time or press X and A, you holding forward while behind the zombie or in front of the zombie while holding backwards, all these contextual stuff. Here I was wondering about spitting. This is another thing where like, I don't think I'd ever go to the trouble to do it, but what if say there was a glitch where if you got the Spitfire juice that it doesn't, like say you don't lose it over the course of the tank fight. And maybe you would still have it during this fight. Well, that would make it really easy. You just keep spitting at him until he dies. In theory, you could do that anyway, because it does do a really marginal amount of damage. He might be, he might be protected against that or something. But I know, like, you can't. It does do like very, very marginal amount of damage. I think it might be so small though. It just gets rounded down to zero though. I don't know. Here I go. I'm like, ah, oh, should I explore? I don't know. I figure at this point, I didn't want to go replay since I was already recording. I was also debating, like, could you just clear out all these zombies and do something else? I don't know. You could even go as far as saying if you couldn't, like, get a zombie up on the tank by throwing up there and using him as a weapon. Because they're actually, like, throwing zombies up, that's pretty powerful. This cutscene. See here, I feel like he's not built up as a villain enough for this matter. I know he's, like, some supposed to be symbolic of... I guess the government trying to cover this up as a whole, but eh. I don't know. I think it could have been executed a little bit better. But like I said, I don't know. I feel like I feel like this mode might have been kind of tacked on later, or like maybe they planned it, but always, but didn't budget it enough time, so they just kind of had to throw it together, or just I don't know. Because in a way, it's hard to say like what their intentions were. Like if they thought over time or. Infinity mode was going to be a big deal, well then of course you want to spend more time on the mall, because you spend all your time there and stuff. It was a good, good ending. I feel like that was just, he's, he's went through like, Three days, and he's like just waiting for the helicopter. Then it doesn't show up. He goes through all this, and it's just like it just won't end. Because even now, they still have to get out through the military. And I don't think they talk about it in this game, at least. But here, there's some great music here. I pulled off. I'm, I'm not fully familiar with how copyright and stuff works there, so I wanted to be careful. I didn't want to get get it pulled or like not be able to monetize it or anything. But it's got a good song. It's like justified. It tells it at the end of the credits. And they have this nice thing where all these zombies are coming at you, all perfectly synchronized, but all with different models. It's pretty cool. Dead Rising in general, is, this game has great music. If you're gonna, anytime like you fight a psychopath, it's almost sad because like rarely the fights go long enough to appreciate it. And I'm notoriously bad about in the moment when I'm fighting, I don't, I don't listen. Like I'm a huge fan of like Dark Souls, and like I never listen to music, even though it's amazing. It's just I forget about it because I'm so focused on what I'm doing. But man, it, it was a great game. I learned a lot going through here. This was my like first attempt at making like a very big series. So I wanted to pick Dead Rising because it fit really well. Where I know technically the game is only like six hours, which one that seems like less than is because there are so many cutscenes and loading screens. Like I would not be surprised if I cut out even an hour or more of just straight loading cutscenes and loading screens. There's a lot. Even on 2, let me tell you, I got started on that, because, again, coming out tomorrow, we're going to get started on that. It still has a lot, and that's, like, saved to my hard drive, too, so it should be fast. 
also, I know this game a lot. I didn't get it when it came out. I didn't have an Xbox until, I think, a fair ways into its life. But I think I came across this game like, hey, I think I got it for like $5 at a GameStop. And I was like, man, there's all these great reviews of the game. You know what? I'll get it. it seems interesting. And I love it. I still, I'm still playing it way later. So I think that says a lot about the game. <sighs> Good time. I wish I could say more. Like, there's so many cool things where I wish I had been around, like, when this game was coming out so I could be kind of more involved in our understanding. There's so much that's lost over the course of time that, it's just like too bad like up to, leading up to the release of the game i'm sure they put out all these cool stuff like someone linked a video of them doing like mocap and like i recently just saw that well that was probably all over when the game was being made but then, trying to go back and find that like on kind of promotional material it's just kind of gone after a while and that's kind of sad because it can be some of the best insights into how what made the game what it is like i would love to hear like a developer commentary of this game there's probably so many cool things that how to come up in development that just it's hard to hit if you don't know exactly what to look for. Great game. I'm really looking forward to 2. I just recently started it. I'm not as familiar, but it's been kind of cool having something I'm not. I don't know every single detail of. It's definitely a little bit harder to do like the whole master one because there's so much more you need to fulfill in terms of people, escorts, getting Zombrex back. I kind of like the more relaxed version of 1. But we'll have to see how that goes. Again, coming out tomorrow. Other than that, I got some big stuff. I'm hoping to put out some drinking games for Dark Souls coming up next weekend, I believe. Just got to get that all filmed and all finished up. It's going to be pretty fun. Moving forward, I'd love to do another st a stream of Dead Rising 1. I was thinking something along the lines of either a theme run or just trying to pick one goal and just doing something crazy like, can I beat the entire game, maybe in overtime mode, without killing a single zombie? Like, that would be a very interesting goal. Like, say, there's probably some cases where it's inevitable. Like, I don't know, maybe a, maybe survivors getting kills count towards your, your count. I don't know off the top of my head. That might be a thing. Well, what if I need to, like, take care of that? Or maybe a zombie has very little health. I accidentally walk into him wrong. Him falling over counts as a, as a kill. It, might, it could be really cool. Might not. But it would be a fun stream either way. So let me know if you want to see that. And let me know how, we, how this went. I love hearing guys speak. I love talking to all of you. I had a great time playing this game. All right, we're going to see our nice little unlocks. And again, this is Grant, and don't take Dead Rising for granted. <laughs>